uh, now I would kindly ask if there are no questions, uh, Dr. Fazuya Shawi Hamid, so Associate Professor from Institute for Biological Science, University of Malaya. So we go to Malaysia, Southeast Asia. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> it's not the morning in Southeast Asia, is it? Dr. Hamid, are you with us? You are muted. You are definitely with us, but you we, we cannot hear you. Sorry about that. Okay. You can hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You are with us. Hello. Yes, I am. Um, I'm having some problem finding the... No, no problem. Just take your time. <laughs> we video. hear you. We hear you. We don't see you yet, but I know yes. you are. You are somewhere around the globe. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how. We... I am not able to figure out um, how do I get the video on. Okay. Um, but uh, sure can I you can see my, you. my 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 yes. chat screen? We see your slide. Okay. I think it's number thirty nine. So it's not the beginning. It's almost the end. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Okay, yes, we are, you are at the beginning right now and we see, we see your presentation. Yes. Oh, now I see it. Now you can see me. I hope. Now we see you and we know. Yes. <laughs> that you are there. All right. I'm just joking. So sorry about the technical uh, uh, difficulties from my side. Okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so thank you for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, I am uh, Fauzia from University of Malaya, from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay, today I'll be talking slightly different from the rest. Okay, uh, talking about uh, waste collection and management. Okay, and how it's important uh, uh, for to, to to establish a, a good uh, ecosystem. All right, so. Um, The slide is not moving now. Please use the arrow key. Arrow key, use the arrow key in your keyboard. Yes, uh, it's, it's not it's not moving. <laughs> Maybe I... I stop share and share again. Sorry about this. Maybe I will not put the... Uh, the presentation mode because maybe it won't be as effective. Anyway, um, to continue, I will be uh, covering um, some introduction, the background on uh, waste management itself, followed with the issue of concern in waste management, what are the challenges, okay? And then what are the challenges uh, in, in uh, implementation of uh, recycling activities and such? And, and uh, finally uh, conclude the session. Okay, let me uh, give you a brief uh, introduction. Okay, what's actually happens um, when we talk about uh, waste management? Global municipal solid waste uh, generation has exceeded 1.3 billion tons in 2013 itself, and it is predicted to reach 27 billion tons in 2050. So this is a huge uh, issue of concern. Okay, if we are not managing the waste well, then we might be uh, ending, you know, we might end up living next to uh, waste itself. 
Okay, on average, each of us are producing 1.42 kilogram uh, of waste on a daily basis. Okay, so this highlights, uh, you know, how crucial it is to get uh, the waste properly managed and, and, you know, disposed or treated, so on and so forth. All right. Um, it has been uh, going on um, uh, in, in, of course, uh, for decades now, uh, the adaptation of waste management hierarchy. It seems to be uh, very effective in the developed nation. However, it is not as effective in developing countries due, due to various reasons, which I'll be sharing uh, in a bit. This... Um, because here highlights the, um, the world production of municipal solid waste. Uh, for those who are not so familiar um, uh, with the term municipal solid waste, uh, these municipal solid waste basically are the waste that we generate. Okay, it's not from the industry, it's mainly from, uh, from, from domestic, it's from uh, institutions, it's from commercial and such more or less they, they consist of what we use uh, and the unwanted goods is what we discarded and they will be the municipal solid waste. So you can see that they are much more higher in the developed country as compared to developing countries. But uh, the trend is shifting in a sense that um, the developing countries are also moving towards the same uh, volume of generation. So that means that all countries in the world requires to have proper waste management system. Otherwise, you know, there will be an environmental issue and such. So when we talk about uh, waste, generally it needs to be stored before it can be collected for treatment or for disposal purpose. So these are some of the mechanism or the storage method uh, commonly used worldwide. We have a depot, okay, depot basically is the designated space or facility to collect waste uh, prior to its treatment or, or disposal, okay. It can also be stored in an enclosed uh, facility or in a fixed storage bin, okay. In some countries, particularly in developing countries, it's quite common to see concrete pipes, Okay, which is uh, cemented uh, to, to become the waste uh, collection points or uh, waste storage mechanism. Okay, others include drums or portable steel bin. Okay, so this green bin, you can see here the, the rectangular uh, bin. This is actually a, a portable uh, bin, which will be uh, uploaded by the truck for, for disposal purpose. Okay, so when we say that waste needs to be stored in one place and eventually it needs to be cleared. Okay, here the next step is to have the waste collection system. Okay, so waste collection is a very crucial import, uh, part of um, waste management system. Okay, all of the waste which has been stored needs to be transported elsewhere. So proper waste collection will enable the waste to be uh, you know, to be going through the next step. Either they go for treatment or they go for disposal. So there are various types of waste collection. Okay, I have listed five here for, uh, for, for, your, uh, for, for our discussion today. The first one is communal collection. This is uh, quite similar to a bring system where there will be a designated place for the community to bring in the waste. Okay, so every waste generator will need to bring in their waste to this collection point. Okay, if it needs uh, to be separated, then sorting will be done at source, meaning by the waste generator itself. Meaning, um, you and I, you need to, uh, all of us uh, need to separate them before we send it to the communal collection. Okay, the second type is the block collection. Here, um, the household will deliver waste to the predetermined uh, point, okay, at the right interval, meaning it is not always available. Let's say uh, it is a schedule for your residential area to be at 11 a.m. on a Monday. So at 11 a.m. on a Monday, you will need to be there to 
uh, send off your waste. Okay, so the, the garbage truck will only come at that design, designated uh, time and place. So it, you, you need to have um, a proper arrangement accordingly. Then we have the curbside collection. Curbside collection allows the waste generator to just leave their, uh, their waste at the roadside, okay, at a designated time. But they, they, they need not be physically there. Okay, so that is the curbside uh, collection. Of course, this system is more convenient for the waste generator, but it creates many disadvantages, including there is nobody to attend to the waste and it might you know, get um, um, uh, carried off by, by dogs or cats or whatever. So these are some of the, of the disadvantage. Um, then we have uh, the most common uh, waste collection system that is door-to-door -door collection. Okay, there are various types of door-to-door -door collection. Basically, it brings um, uh, or the waste are being collected from house to house. Okay, that is uh, quite common in, in many parts of the world. Okay, and the last one uh, is the pneumatic uh, collection system. This is uh, applicable for high-rise uh, buildings where um, they would create a chute and waste can be discarded from any level of the uh, of the facility from the from the, um, um, the top uh, level or the, the 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 ground floor or whatever into a designated place which is called the waste house and the garbage truck will come and collect from the waste house so this is another mechanism it's quite modern um, of course, it requires uh, more maintenance because you don't want to have the stink. Uh, the waste needs to be properly packed uh, or back so that it will not release leachate and such. So there are also uh, advantages and disadvantages of this particular mechanism. As for uh, the mountain area, this um, the, 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 the typical or the common um, uh, approach or uh, waste collection might not be as applicable. Okay, this is because uh, you know in in mountain area we have uh, various uh, types of settlement. So we may we may have uh, cities in in the mountain area. We might have some rural area with uh, you know uh, accessible roads, but some are not accessible by roads. So these are the consideration that needs to be uh, looked into before uh, a proper collection or transport uh, system can be designed. Okay, this table here provide you some information how uh, it can be done or which is a more um, effective uh, mechanism as compared to other. Okay, for example, in uh, remote areas which are not connected by roads. So uh, perhaps the use of animals, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a horse carrying um, 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 carrying some cart and, and uh, go around from house to house to collect the waste. That, that would be more possible as compared to having a garbage truck because, you know, there is no available or accessible route. This is uh, one good example of a door-to-door -door, uh, waste collection. Uh, that happens in Kathmandu, for example, they, they, they goes around uh, using tricycles because of the small uh, alley, okay, so they can actually go from door to door, okay, but of course, because the, the alley, it can be very narrow, where uh, it's impossible to have a larger vehicles uh, going around collecting the waste. Now, this brings us uh, to the uh, issues uh, in, in waste management. So what are the main concern when we talk about waste management? If you have a wonderful waste collection system, you have a wonderful um, uh, disposal facility and such. However, if you do not have the uh, participation from the general public, then it's still not uh, possible to achieve an effective waste management system. So lack of public participation is one of the biggest concern when we talk about waste management. Okay. Secondly, um, problems related to waste management is also gaining prominence because of public awareness. You know, people become uh, aware of um, you know the the siting of facilities. Then they began to raise their concern and their objection 
not to have this facility built nearby their areas, okay? Not in, a, not in my backyard. As long as the waste is not in their area, then uh, it's good, okay? As long as the waste is out of their sight, it's good, but not in their backyard. So these are uh, some of the concerns uh, related to waste management. Okay, then we have uh, another uh, issue that relates to the increasing amount of waste generation. Okay, and then some countries are unable to uh, practice a good waste management system that um, problems uh, would, would arise from improper waste management. This is a, a one a good illustration you know, uh, related to uh, lack of, of awareness, okay? They are aware that waste is not good for them, but they are not aware the fact that if they litter the waste everywhere, it will create other problems. Okay, factors of which a challenge, uh, efficient waste management in mountain area can be much more as compared to that uh, for uh, a lowland um, areas, okay? First of all, we have discussed a bit uh, on the type of settlement, okay? In mountain area, we have a uh, settlement that range from small, um, small, small uh, groups of houses to uh, very big or uh, a uh, large uh, city. Um, so we have very, very different range of uh, uh, types of settlement. Then uh, other factors that we need to include is the attitude and the uh, climate. The altitude uh, also can be very uh, different from one area to another, and the extreme climate can create other uh, issue of concern. For example, it might not allow some vehicles to function properly because of this uh, extreme uh, cold and such. Okay, next uh, factors includes uh, topography and land availability. So, uh, because the fact that mountain area is, you know, it consists of hills and mountains and such, therefore it can be very challenging uh, to find <clears throat> the best place to, to locate your disposal facility or a landfill, okay? Uh, other factors uh, that needs to be considered is the seismic uh, activities. Uh, it is very important uh, to locate um, facilities in areas where it's not vulnerable for uh, being, uh, to earthquake, because otherwise you're gonna have a destruction of this facility. And then uh, we have uh, remoteness and um, connectivity and uh, also the accessibility by road. So all of this needs to be considered before um, a, a proper waste management system can be uh, implemented. And next, uh, we have the um, illustration, a, a typical site in a mountainous area where uh, because of the gravity pool, um, many of the waste or the garbage will end up in waterways. So that's the reason why you see that many of their surface uh, water in, in mountain, mountainous uh, cities are, are, are slightly polluted. So to compare uh, between um, solid waste management in other areas uh, with the mountain area, we can see that uh, in, in other areas, it's just the, the, the common uh, factors uh, that includes poor awareness, lack of uh, waste separation, inadequate uh, facilities, or uh, poor transportation uh, vehicles is not uh, available. Okay, and then lack of uh, treatment facility, um, unsuitable uh, waste disposal techniques, and then uh, other, other issue of concern, such as a lack of institutional coordination, okay, no uh, enforcement, no technical capacity or lack of funding to be the factors that challenge um, uh, waste management in, in other areas. But for uh, the mountainous areas, we have much, much more than that, okay? We have to consider the topography, the geology, the remoteness of settlement, and then uh, the diverse temperature, extreme condition of the um, weather, and then uh, the fact that mountainous area, they, they are 
um, having a very unique uh, ecosystem. Therefore, they are um, sensitive environmental um, areas, okay, that needs to be preserved. And then uh, also they are more vulnerable to uh, seismic activities, uh, lack of uh, road. Uh, and also, uh, this is very interesting, the fact that uh, waste management in mountain area needs to consider a special type of waste, uh, particularly those waste related to uh, mountain, uh, mountainous uh, activities, you know, hiking and such. And um, so it would require different disposal and treatment. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, it's also uh, challenging when it comes to uh, designing the route and also considering what are the vehicles uh, suitable for, for the waste as transport. So these are some of the uh, challenges uh, faced by waste managers in, in mountain areas. And you can see from here, this graph indicates that more and more um, uh, countries in the world are actually depending on landfilling and, or open dumping for their disposal option. So this uh, highlight the fact that uh, it is crucial to have a proper uh, disposal site. Um, and um, unfortunately, it is, um, it is worth noting that the share of waste that is disposed in open dumps tends to decrease as the income level of the country increases, which can also be translated uh, to be, uh, you know, um, in a poorer country, the tendency to depend on open dump is much, much more. Okay, so this brings about, uh, you know, the, the, the crucial need for establishing a proper sanitary landfill, otherwise it will impact the environment. Okay, um, so this is uh, just um, to, to illustrate what a landfill look like, okay, where everything will be dumped. Okay, uh, in developing countries, 10 to 15% only are sanitary landfill, but the rest are non-engineered landfills or open dumps, okay? And when we talk about open dumps, we are referring to um, a disposal site which does not have any lining system. It doesn't protect the uh, pollution from the waste in from uh, entering the groundwater system or even contaminating the surface uh, water. And it also doesn't have any leachate collection or landfill gas collection system, all right? So it will uh, produce all kinds of environmental pollution uh, and, and of course, uh, creates other, other uh, problems, okay? So um, when, when we talk about this, uh, in, in open dumps, many uh, develop, developing countries practice open burning, okay? Because this happens to be the cheapest, um, the cheapest mechanism to, to read of the waste. Um, we also have issues related to pests and vermin when we talk about open dump because they are just dumped there. So it attracts all, all kinds of animals um, and it can be very difficult to control. We also have issues related to the scavenging activities, all right, where waste pickers will come in and try to rummage and, and uh, retrieve. Uh, recoverable materials uh, for recycling to sell it off. Um, so this also uh, becomes an issue of concern, okay? So this is uh, to illustrate that. And um, when waste is just being buried into the land, eventually it will create a soil contamination and soil remediation can be a really expensive uh, uh, technology, okay? Um, in regards to open burning of waste, uh, it was uh, uh, recorded that 620 million tons of waste are burned uh, on, on an annual basis. So this uh, creates much more uh, impact uh, to the air pollution and also uh, to uh, when we talk about global warming and climate change. Here, uh, this uh, illustrate the uh, estimated quantity of waste burned by country, uh, either in, in, uh, from residents or 
even uh, in, in dumps. Um, it will create a lot of uh, air pollution. Okay, it will emit uh, particulate matters uh, to the atmosphere, and of course, it will cause a lot more health uh, problems. So it can be really challenging uh, to establish an efficient waste uh, management. Okay, if you do not have a, a proper waste diversion sector, then you're gonna need. Uh, uh, to, to uh, you, you have to consider uh, making the informal sector a, a formal uh, uh, component of, of waste management. Otherwise, they will still come in illegally into landfill and, and might create other problems. Secondly, lack of enforcement of waste management uh, legislation. This is happening um, in many developing countries because of, uh, you, know, uh, you do not have uh, enough manpower to help uh, with the enforcement. Uh, then we also have issue related Excuse to... Excuse me, just yes. a small reminder, gentle, you have six more minutes. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, then uh, another issue of concern is the overlapping responsibility of uh, government agency. Then it, it, is a re it reduces the cost effectiveness uh, of, of the administration and also the lack of recycling. So this, um, when we talk about the uh, three R, reduce, reuse, and recycle, it is not happening so much in many of the developing country and even uh, in, in uh, particularly in, in mountainous area because of uh, various reason, okay? I'll go very quickly uh, when we talk, uh, to talk about uh, recycling activities, okay? Um, if there is no proper waste aggregation activities, there is no clear for policy, no supporting a local facility, then uh, recycling activity can become very difficult. Okay. In uh, addition to that, if public is not participating in, in uh, uh, recycling programs, then you're going to have a very much lower rate of uh, recycling. Okay. Uh, this uh, pie chart here illustrates the uh, material recycle um, globally. Where you can see paper, uh, it's, it's uh, the, the, the uh, highest portion, uh, followed by uh, plastic, um, metals, and glass. And this is uh, plastic recycling worldwide. And you can see that um, the most significant um, plastic recycling happens in India because of the economic drive. And um, backyard recycling is very common in the country because it helps to improve or uh, it provides uh, site incomes uh, for the urban poor. Uh, and uh, we also see a similar uh, scenario in, in uh, many developing countries where uh, recycling activities actually um, provide some, some source of uh, income to the urban poor. So it helps to uh, improve recycling rate. However, we will see that um, this trend will change when the um, standard of living improve in the developing countries where uh, recycling will not be a worth a practice. Uh, it's not a convenient practice. And then you're going to see, um, uh, you know, the, the recycling rate will, will drop uh, significantly. Um, this uh, table here lists out the challenges of 3R implementation, where you can see that it differs from a developed developed nations and developing uh, de developing countries okay uh, because of the population growth we can see that uh, more and more uh, there will be more and more uh, waste pickers uh, presence uh, in in uh, disposal site to to collect uh, re resources uh, which can be sell uh, in the market okay as for policy in implementation in developing countries uh, implementation is quite weak because of the lack of enforcement, okay? And then we also have issue related to changes in waste composition because uh, when you change the composition, the original plan of the facility might not uh, be uh, suitable anymore, all right? And then um, others includes informal uh, recycling. Uh, in developing uh, nation, this is very common okay, uh, unavoidable. Um, therefore, um, proper uh, waste management system needs to be implemented to improve this, okay. Uh, this is just to illustrate the return deposit machines, uh, which are available in many uh, developed country, 
where you return your recyclable materials and you get your money back. Okay, um, community uh, uh, recycling activities. Okay, and this uh, bring us uh, to the last uh, component of my talk today. That is um, how recycling is, is important in, in waste management uh, because it will help to improve our linear economy to a circular economy to allow the waste to still remain within the economic cycle and not uh, exit uh, the economic uh, cycle and, and uh, you know, to maintain uh, sustainable production and such. So it, <clears throat> this is another way of looking at the waste management hierarchy. The typical waste management hierarchy has always been in a form of pyramid, but now it is converted into a, 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 a cycle to, to suit the, the circular economy uh, purpose. All right, so when we talk about waste treatment options, um, what would be appropriate in, in certain areas might not be applicable to certain areas. Uh, now, uh, if you look at the uh, mountain cities, and towns um, having a larger scale composting might be uh, possible, but uh, in uh, remote areas which are not connected uh, by roads, some facilities might not be accessible at all. So this needs to be considered before a proper waste, um, waste treatment uh, system uh, can be uh, designed and, and implemented. So thank you all uh, for your kind attention and my apologies for all the technicality uh, earlier. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, so uh, again, thank you. It's very important that we remained within uh, within a time frame it's a very interesting topic waste collection management of course um, and now huh, i don't see the next the next uh, lecturer i'm afraid can't see it right now in the program 